Our next uh, guest was supposed to be Ms. Shipara Ghosh, but uh, she is unable to come due to some urgency. But uh, I would like to speak few words about her. Uh, we want uh, our virtual audience, uh, our participants, to get to know a little about her, as she is also one of the finest interpreters, uh, interpreters in uh, India. Uh, Ms. Shipara Ghosh did her MA in Russian, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, in 1985. She worked as a translator, interpreter in Ministry of Defense from 1985 to 1986. Uh, she worked as an uh, attaché, um, Central uh, Asia, Europe East Divisions, Ministry of External Affairs from 1996 to 2002. Then she was third secretary, then uh, second secretary, political wing, Embassy of India, Moscow from 2002 to 2006. Uh, she was under secretary, then deputy secretary, Eurasia, Central Europe Divisions, Ministry of External Affairs from 2006 to 2016. Uh, from January 2017 till today, she's first secretary, uh, PEIC, Councillor Political, Embassy of India, Tashkent. She's fluent in English, Russian, Hindi, and Bengali. Uh, she's, of course, well experienced in interpretation. I myself have seen and sometimes watched her hundreds of times, I can say, sitting with different heads of governments and doing interpretation. A wonderful interpreter, always in demand. As Dr. Sonu said, yes, she has promised us. She told, uh, he told me that he has promised us it will be a privilege when she will share his experience in our next webinar or work workshop on translation and interpretation. Uh, so, um, uh, we are eagerly waiting for you to share your insight and experiences, Shipra Ghoshji. Yes, she promised to join next time, but she could not join this time. We didn't uh, ask our next person, uh, Dr. C.B. James. Uh, Dr. Babu. Yeah, I have a actually very long, uh, I'll say, uh, introduction or bio data, whatever, but I'll, I'll try to make it short. He's also well experienced. Uh, Dr. Chinna Kadan Varya James. He's presently assistant professor in Russian uh, on a dog basis from 19 September to 2007. Uh, uh, 19 September 2007 to 25th May 2019, and, and presently he is guest faculty from September 2019 uh, in Department of Slavonic and Finno-Ugrian Studies, uh, Delhi University, University of Delhi. His uh, he has completed his uh, PhD in Philology from People's Friendship University, Moscow, in 1991. What I remember is about him is his thesis was more than 500 words because I have read his thesis. It was more than 500 words, a very big thesis. Uh, he uh, did his Master of Arts also from the same uh, university, People's Friendship, Friendship University, Moscow, in 1982, from 1982 to 1987. That was five years integrated course. And he passed with honors. Uh, he has done Diploma in Translation and Interpretation from People's Friendship University, Moscow. Uh, from, it was from 1982 to 1987, five-year part-time course. He has Certificate in Journalism, also from People's Friendship University, 1985 to 1986, one year. That was one-year part-time course. Diploma in Russian. Cultural Department of the USSR Embassy, Delhi, nine, one year part time course. And uh, he has completed four semesters of um, five years, uh, five years integrated program of MA in Russian language and literature uh, from uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, from JNU, Jawaharlal, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. He was here from 1982 82. And he 
went to Moscow after obtaining the scholarship. Yeah. There are a few more things to, of course, there are many things, but I want to share some of his experiences. Uh, he has conducted workshop RB Center of Education, four session of 15 minutes each of practical seminar on ease of learning Russian through explanatory grammar developed from system linguistics perspective. He has, he has presented a number of a number of papers in different uh, international and national conferences. Then training courses and training workshops. He is participating in different training, training courses and training workshops. Then a written translation experience. He's having uh, experience of uh, approximately 33 years. And he has done general business, scientific and technical translation of oil and gas, petrochemical energy and energy efficiency, mining, mineral, metal, asbestos, information, information technology, uh, tra transportation and logistics, railways, aviation, automobile and automobile com components, uh, pharmacology, medicine, biotechnology, oh, it's a long list. Natural health care solution, archaeology, monuments, restoration, and they have, it's a long list, and so on. Mm. Conference interpretation experience, consecutive and uh, simultaneous. Uh, interpretation in international congresses abroad. The, the WPC Russia, World Petroleum Congress, Moscow, Russia in 2014. Then in Korea, World Energy Congress, Malaysia, uh, World uh, Petroleum Congress in uh, Qatar, and Moscow International Petroleum Club, uh, Moscow, Russia in 2005. And then interpretation in international conferences, meetings in India. International Judiciary Conference, Supreme Court of India, February uh, 2020, organized by and held at the Supreme Court of India. India, Tajikistan, Joint Commission meeting on trade, economic, scientific and technical cooperation uh, uh, in 2020 uh, in Udyog Bhavan, New Delhi. Indian Steel Association, the conclave, was held on 2009, in 2019 at uh, uh, Hotel Lalit here in New Delhi. Then Kim, Kimberly process, industry training, oil and gas, le leadership training, Asia Pacific tra tra uh, Trade Facilitation Forum. What? It was also, it, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, it was, it, your, uh, Resume is too long, actually. Yeah, you have shown. No, no. Yes, there, there are so many things to tell. Uh, okay. Mm, fine, his, he has interpreted in India. Kiss. Few of uh, few more I just want to tell. He has uh, interpreted in India, Kyrgyz Republic Business Forum. Both India Central Asia Dialogue, ICWA, BRICS Media Forum 2016. Economic Development Board, Government of Andhra Pradesh, present, uh, presentation, okay, fine. Okay, I think they are both, oh, okay. Uh, Russian Business Mission in India, 18th India, Russia Working Group on Trade and Economic Cooperation. Sixth India, Russia Forum on Trade and Investments. Sixth meeting of uh, uh, INSTC expert group one on commercial and operational matters. Break six meeting of INSTC expert group two on documentation. UNESCO World Heritage Periodic Reporting Workshop. Okay. I think that's. Okay, I think. <laughs> okay, that's. Okay. Uh, I, okay, I invite. Uh, Maybe we can give the floor Dr. to. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. C.V. James, I request you to please uh, share your experience on interpretation. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kiran Singh Varma. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to speak about my experience as an interpreter. Yeah, uh, you know, and um, uh, most I will be speaking mostly uh, as an experience of an interpreter learner uh, because uh, I am uh, how I learned it and how I, how I am still learning. This will be more useful for the uh, uh, new students, uh, as I have been told. Most of the people are uh, many many new students are attending this uh, uh, conference. So that way, I'll be uh, able to tell something which may be useful for them. Um, Dr. Sonu, can I uh, share the uh, presentation? Yeah, okay, it is there. All right, thank you. Yes, sir, sure. Yes, sir, sure. Give me one minute time, please. Can you see it, please? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. It's visible. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, uh, although, I mean, as I told you, it is the experience of an interpreter learner uh, than a professional interpreter, because uh, uh, compared to the previous uh, eminent speakers, uh, Professor Ramadhikari Kumar and uh, Professor Taranjit Singh, uh, in front of them, I am uh, a learner. I am still learning a lot. So, uh, a professional interpreter, he uh, facilitates the people to understand each other. That much important is his work. And uh, with the service of the interpreters, the listeners with audio gears will have the same emotions and ideas of the speaker. So, what they do, they at the same time hear, listen, comprehend the source speech, and speak in the target language. What about you, new students? Are you? Do you want to become uh, uh, an interpreter? Let us see what are the minimum uh, eligibility criteria to be an interpreter. Mandatory conditions to be an interpreter. It is uh, a minimum. You have to know two languages, and there should be a strong desire to work as an interpreter. That is what the the minimum eligibility criteria. I think most of you are meeting this criteria, and I think. Uh, you are already eligible to do so, but let us see now what all things I will share, what all things I have done, uh, what are the options and things like that. So what are the roadmap? There are two options. One is join a professional interpretation course in any of the universities which are offering them. And second option is join any of the uh, foreign language faculty, learn one or two languages and start, uh, I mean, uh, and parallelly you start learning, uh, attending uh, uh, courses on interpretation and also self-learning and self-training. This is the second option. So after my uh, 12th class, when I decided to go for language, I, uh, I had a, a choice, I was looking for the choices in India, but in India, so far we do not have specialized courses on foreign language interpretation. So I had to, uh, the, my, I, I had to apply for uh, JNU and uh, write the written test and interview and join for uh, the course. That was the second option I opted. So admission to JNU has changed my future because I knew very well at that time the, the possibilities in the uh, language area, in teaching, in translation interpretation, in uh, business sector, in uh, tourism sector and so on and so forth. So, uh, 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 so I, st I uh, started seriously uh, taking uh, this course. So when did I start my uh, interpretation training? I started my interpretation training, I should say, from the very first classes on phonetics. Because uh, we have to acquaint with the, the uh, alien sounds, syllables, phonetic words, phonetic sentences, word stress, sentence intonation, all these things are very necessary for an interpreter because to understand the speaker, you need to know the right, uh, uh, you know, pronunciation and uh, uh, the, 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 uh, how they speak and things like that. And when you speak, 
you also need to have uh, proper uh, intonation, proper pronunciation. So that is very necessary as uh, Professor Ramadikari uh, Kumar pointed out, phonetica eta dusha isika. So I mean, that is almost, that is, uh, I also agree with that. Uh, so all this, uh, mainly this is connected with the oral activities of hearing, listening, speaking. So uh, all our uh, uh, audio receptors are uh, very active as well as our vocal apparatus are, are very active in the um, process of uh, uh, analyzing the speech, uh, uh, what we hear and when we uh, speak to the audience through our uh, microphone. So uh, I will shift to uh, the speech comprehension. Everybody has their own ways of uh, understanding the, uh, the text, the, the speech of the speaker. Everybody works out the, a way how to, uh, 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 how to understand, how to analyze, how to process it, and how to uh, um, transfer to the target language. So here, uh, definitely, the, the, uh, each, when I, the, the classes on uh, morpho morphemics, morphology, syntax, and lexicology has uh, have uh, have helped me because uh, while I was learning, again I tell you my translation already started from the classes because when I was learning parallelly I was translating in my mind what is that word, what is that grammar, and uh, you know it was parallelly going in my mind. Uh, mostly it was with English, the lang uh, the L1, the first language, and the sometimes at times to the mother tongue. So practically, when I was learning Russian, I was uh, uh, I, I was having I was uh, uh, also focusing to understand more about the about English language and um, a little about my mother tongue. So then, uh, uh, at, uh, uh, at the same time, while I was uh, studying uh, in JNU, like uh, any one of you, I was looking for more opportunities to interact with the uh, uh, native speakers. So that is how I landed up in uh, uh, cultural uh, center and uh, took up the course. This is uh, because uh, as you know at that time we don't have internet, we don't have any other means uh, to communicate with uh, easily with uh, native speakers. So these are the ways uh, we combine. Now you have uh, varieties of uh, um, um, uh, ways uh, in order to interact with the natives and uh, uh, so, so many opportunities are there which we didn't have at that time. So uh, then, uh, after two years, uh, I thought to be to uh, to be good and good in language, which I recommend to all of you. At a certain point, you should live in the uh, country uh, of this uh, language, uh, what you learn. So uh, when I got the, got an opportunity to go for uh, higher, uh, further studies to Russia, I opted for it, and I left JNU after four semesters of five year uh, five years integrated program and continued my uh, studies in PFU, uh, which is now known as uh, Russian Friendship University. So uh, there uh, I had uh, a very good uh, exposure to Russian language, culture, the people, the country. So it was a very good experience. I have uh, many eminent people, uh, academicians have taught me, and uh, uh, especially I am very uh, uh, thankful to uh, Professor Melnikov, who has uh, introduced me to a new way of uh, looking at uh, language, a new approach to language. That is what uh, given me an edge uh, till today to assess, uh, to analyze the language uh, in a different way. So uh, one of the aspects uh, what is, uh, what is uh, uh, taught me is that to see there is a developing inventivity in uh, Russian sentences and uh, you can have the kinetic picture of the developing event in the mind. Why I say this? Because while interpreting, while interpreting to pick the idea, the, the image of the idea and transfer to the other language form. So here, uh, those things what I learned from uh, uh, those courses and uh, subsequent uh, readings have helped me. So uh, I used to uh, m uh, make the eventive uh, blocks, info blocks of the sentences 
where I see the, the entire uh, sentence as a depiction of a developing event with a lot of, uh, with uh, an initiator of the event and his action and uh, um, how the subsequent participants are affected by the action and how all these things are taking place, uh, the circumstances and things like that, you know, of time, uh, place uh, or uh, the, the aim or the cause, the reasons and so on and so forth, so which, uh, uh, which are put into different, different blocks. And when I examined the note taking of different people, they also fo follow a, a kind of uh, uh, minimized system of this. So, uh, actually Russian, gram uh, uh, Russian language grammar is so complex but at the same time, if you know the grammar information, the, it can hint to uh, the developing event depicted in the Russian sentence to a certain ex extent. The famous uh, 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 sentence uh, of uh, Sherba, Blokaya Kusdra Steka Budlanula Bokra E Kudryachit Bakaryonka. Here, we, the, all the words are, uh, it is uh, unknown words, there are no, and it, they don't exist. Though he has taken stems like Glock, Uzdr, Shtek, Budal, Bokar, Kur, uh, these are meaningless. They have to, he has taken uh, and made a sentence, but he put the real affixes. So how by the word building aff affixes and word changing affixes, how can you uh, more or less understand what is being uh, depicted in this sentence, although uh, e, the identities are not real. So similarly, I can give another uh, 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 co complex sentence, uh, another sentence, sorry, another uh, sentence in uh, Russian, uh, where in place of lexical morphemes, I used uh, X uh, and uh, X as an unknown sign. So e, the sentence uh, sounds like this. X ni X, X ni mix ami, X avata, ras X sovivayet, X is X yushak, I X yushnik, X sovikov. So by having only the grammatical uh, morphemes, that is word building and word changing morphemes, more or less the plot is understood to the uh, reader, uh, to the listener. So. Uh, this is uh, this, this this I just wanted to say the grammar uh, part is so important uh, in uh, Russian language to understand the idea because as I told you before each typical sentence of a Russian language is uh, uh, depicting a developing event so how to uh, when uh, the 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 task for the interpreter is how to transfer the content fast to the language form and we be uh, Russian being a foreign language to me I had to give concentration to all the complex problems the grammar grammatical problems whether it is uh, related to gender number case aspect verbs of motion or the uses usage of prefixes or uh, 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 different meanings of words and things like that so here uh, we, when we continue our uh, uh, training in uh, uh, interpretation, we sit on uh, certain uh, problems and try to find solutions. Those solutions, because uh, uh, solutions should, should enable us to quickly transfer the idea into the target uh, language form. So the form is, uh, when I when I'm talking about the translation from English to Russian, Russian being an inflected language with, uh, which uses a lot of uh, um, word, word building and word changing uh, morphemes. So you have to know uh, very clearly what is what. So uh, I, have, I have worked on different uh, uh, areas of grammar in order to uh, facilitate fast transfer of idea into the form. So one of the small things what I have done, one of the things for a, for a demonstration, I will show you uh, how, uh, how uh, it has helped uh, uh, me uh, to uh, immediately transfer to the form where, where, where some difficulties are there. So let us take uh, one of the uh, uh, things what is the gender classification of nouns. 
So gender classification, of course, when it is ab, you know, it is feminine. Most of the nouns it is assigned to feminine gender. When it is o, it is to neutral gender. And when it is uh, stem ending on a hard sign, it is uh, mostly most of them are to the uh, masculine gender. But what happens when the uh, stem ends on a uh, soft consonant and have no uh, gender markers? So here suddenly uh, I was uh, I, I it came to my I, uh, mind that you have to operate on the images what is given by those words because by the images you can already classify them to uh, feminine or masculine because all the uh, words which has got stem ending on soft sign belongs to either masculine or feminine there is no neutral gender so this is how. I started classifying them on the criteria of uh, uh, the, the main uh, uh, protomorphic content which we have already having the, the massiveness which is a characteristic principle of uh, the uh, feminine gender. Then I took all the variants of feminine gender like uh, massiveness, it can be also flatness, it can be plain. It can be abstract noun because abstract nouns are also like a flat one. It's a generalized one, so it should, should be. Uh, it is not individual, so as opposed to individual massiveness, as opposed to individual. This is what I have done. So let us. I just wanted to give you uh, an idea how this visual images because visual images is far, very far fast. We can understand and we can just immediately understand. Then it is what is the uh, gender because in translate in interpreting it should be very fast. So you see the. Uh, see the image it is flat yes it is flat so it is uh, feminine so this is like flat feminine so it's a furniture or a pastel or scatter everything is uh, you will find very easily you can identify by the image what they give you uh, what to which uh, it belongs to they belong to feminine gender so it can so definitely it is uh, this thing chitraj again flat yeah so medal yes it's a flat and then uh, brove, yes, I don't, I don't think anybody is having a brove, uh, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, is pointing towards the uh, something. So, or grooge, the, the uh, anatomic part between the uh, neck and the stomach, uh, or keist in two meanings, or laden. So, you can see, uh, I have uh, taken all these photos from uh, Google just to have an image conveyed, you know. The typical ones which I have uh, taken, so mostly these are the pictures, images, what is given in uh, Google. And uh, so, or Ploschit, Pavernest, Pavernest, this is Pavernest Mars, the step, or Stupen, Pechen, not individual, it's flat, yeah, Crepus, of course the, it is, uh, the wall is so flat and uh, it is seen very clearly, Pech, yeah, so, or Priesten. The play is the Sayanka Sudov or Gryas. We understand, you know, all these things, you know, very flat. Peel, very, very definitely we see these things. You know, shares, yes, it is not individual, it is massive. Yeah, Noch, yeah. So, uh, suppose uh, Noch, it is, it is flat, the darkness is flat. When you close the eyes, everything is flat. So, or Paul Noch, it is the same. Soul, again, it is not individual, so it is uh, massive. And uh, sales, sales we understand as a uh, as a uh, as a biomass biomass uh, sales uh, reap. Uh, so that is how the understanding is not individual. Uh, it is uh, again this thing. Or Syrian, uh, these flowers are not. We are not talking about individual one flower or you know it is two other B C. Crop, of course, uh, that liquidity is uh, definitely it is not individuality. Any liquid thing uh, you will find okay uh, the, the uh, with. Uh, uh, these will be the, the feminine gender, it's all flat. Or mass, uh, you know, I haven't uh, taken uh, because mass every, every time they are shown in a tube, but I'm talking about outside the tube, yeah, how it looks like. It's not individual. Mage, so we are not talking about the product made of mage, but the same mage or style. So it is the, it is, it is, we are not talking about the mold in which it is poured and the shape of it, what it gets, but the very, uh, 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 the, the, Mage and Stahl, yes, so all, be, all will be feminine, very, you know. Uh, Markov, Markov, we are talking about at the Travini, at the Trava, at the Travinista Rastenia. So that Trava is the main understanding, but not the uh, individual Markov, you know, that is not the primary meaning. So initially it is the uh, Poly, I mean the Rastenia, the Trava. It is a Trava, it is not Jeriva. 
so watch it is something long so definitely uh, it is not it is it's a kind of uh, taken as a massive longness variant of massiveness is longness also together with the flatness and plainness uh, and things like that shape yes this is a, a long thing niche yes it's uh, in the same category it goes to and os os uh, of course uh, uh, it is uh, it's a, it's a piece that connects to uh, wheels course yell uh, here yes there can be some doubt but uh, yolka is a word which is there and uh, there are some words which you need the additional clarification either from the etymology or from the internal form of the word which is uh, uh, i mean consisting of the the, the morphemes what is uh, what, what is uh, what the word is constituting of uh, so otherwise uh, if you are talking about uh, abstract uh, names all abstract names ending with uh, uh, soft sign all are feminine so you have got in front of you all the examples and it's very easy the moment you know the meaning and its abstractness means it's all uh, you know it's it's attributed to uh, uh, feminine it's a generalization it's a uh, understanding of that generalization itself is a kind of abstractness so uh, that is all feminine then uh, all these things continues and uh, of course biological sex is easily identifiable for animate nouns uh, then uh, of course there are certain words mm, why uh, individual why corn is uh, uh, is masculine and uh, 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 lochet is feminine because when there are when they are uh, there are two nouns um, and the one which is uh, more uh, active um, uh, and indu, indu, more more active that will be termed as uh, 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 masculine and the other one will be feminine because in this uh, case when you compare with the uh, corn comparatively more active one uh, will be masculine yesli apirats and slavar dalia to kon eta virkhovaya loshech na katore es dev a vot loshech saglasne etomu slavariu domashnia skatina katore es plutiruit domashniam hazyaistve rabotem tak loshedi but we don't say rabotem tak kanya Lashadine sila, because eta damashne skatina, rabote, yes, chesna raboche sila, lashadine sila, cannot be konea sila. Koni pole, because this is, uh, we use the cone for uh, uh, riding, so definitely it is koni pole, no ni lashadine pole. Or if you are talking about some heroes, at a giroi nina na loshadi ana kanye. So these type of things you can differentiate very well and uh, come to the conclusion that the relatively uh, less active one will go as uh, the more active one will be masculine. So the, likewise I have uh, taken out all the words from Kratki Slavar Ruska Vizika uh, 1978 edition all the words I have analyzed and uh, uh, it is all uh, divided into masculine and feminine and 90% uh, of the uh, problem is solved for the uh, students. Uh, so uh, what I am telling is, uh, is that uh, when we try to uh, uh, understand the uh, language form in order to uh, do the interpretation, we uh, hit upon certain solutions which are useful for my, uh, for my teaching as well. So I combined interpretation, teaching and all other activities into, uh, you know, uh, is complementary to each other. That's what I have done and uh, the article is also already published on this in the, in the Prayal First Journal. So, in the similarly, singleness, oneness, concreteness, as opposed to massiveness, flatness, abstractness, is uh, uh, assigned to masculine gender, which we are giving a lot of uh, this thing, uh, you know, words. Or Yanbar, uh, February, April, it is the Radhawe Panyachi Mesits, which is masculine. Like uh, Kofe, it is a Radhawe Panyachi Napita, so that is why it is masculine. Kisel, it is like a quas, you know, uh, something. No, that is also Napita, Radhawe Panyachi, that's why it is masculine. So those things are uh, also can be explained very well. So Jn, uh, we already understand it's, a, it's like opposite to the contra contrast, contrastive internal semantics to nodes. Because uh, when you close your eyes, you it's all flat. When you open, you already start seeing things. So that is why in various languages, uh, Jn is uh, masculine and nodes is 
uh, uh, feminine. It's, it's, it's the same thing so, in Russian. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, there, is, there are some comments like uh, uh, how these things are going to help in interpretation. Interpretation. That I already told you, uh, we, we, we are learning a foreign language. And foreign language forms, because finally when we translate from English to Russian, you have to suddenly identify the, uh, the, the words, the, the form. So because of the inflected nature of Russian language, we are facing a lot of problems uh, with regard to the form. So I have taken some of the crucial things and I'm just showing you how visual image can suddenly understand what is the form. And if you don't know which, which gender uh, these uh, words are, then totally the, uh, the form will be wrong in Russian because the complete declension, uh, uh, declension completely depends upon the, uh, the, the, the gender of these nouns. I hope I have answered uh, to the question. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah I will not, I will not uh, go, I, I am shifting to other, yeah, I other think areas. We are going towards the language. Yeah, uh, language. Thing. So I, because I've, uh, I've, I've also told you, this is one of the aspects I, I, uh, I was learning while uh, doing the interpretation. So this is, these are the self-learning activities what I do uh, in connection with the interpretation and which is, uh, which I use for teaching. So let us see what are the uh, preparation interpreters uh, does to grab the content, content first. We told about internal uh, linguistic uh, content, I mean internal linguistic uh, uh, activities what we have to do in order to uh, grab the content first. Now we are talking about extra linguistic activities in order to grab the content, content first. These are the two aspects. Uh, so the one is we have to know the theme, subject matter, the domain knowledge, speech objective, when we go for uh, any program, we will we should know what is the agenda, what is the program. Then also previously con conducted similar events we check. Then uh, we also go go to the speaker's resume if possible, previous speeches on similar themes, and we also check the organizational activities. With these, all these things uh, give a, a kind of uh, domain knowledge by which when we do the simultaneous interpretation we should be also able to forecast to a certain extent what the, uh, the speaker is going to say next. And plus, we should understand what the speaker is telling. So a little bit of domain, a little bit of preparation uh, with regard to these things will help uh, uh, to smoothen the fast uh, transfer of content uh, uh, to the other uh, language. So self-learning is always a continuous activity. So first of all, I advise the students, you just uh, uh, almost like a SWOT analysis, like a, um, uh, strength, weakness, opportunities and threat analysis. You, I mean, I mean to say you assess yourself where you need, uh, uh, where you are strong, where you are weak, where you need to prepare more, where you have to train yourself more and things like that. Then only uh, uh, this is what I do uh, so that uh, I check, check, okay, I have to sit uh, on, the, on these aspects. For example, today, uh, Professor Charanjit Singh told uh, how to uh, compress the sentence without uh, uh, losing the um, uh, idea. So that is a very good thing which I don't use. I, I, I translate full. I try to translate full. So that is a wrong thing. Uh, and uh, I have to learn for uh, as I am very much convinced of what he was telling. So I'll start working on that. That is what I, 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 what I was telling, you know, continuous learning. So where we have to see where are our weak points? My weak point I have to identify, I have to work, I have to start working. Some of the continuous uh, preparation activities is extensive reading, reading loud in Russian because that will, uh, that is, that is very beneficial. Communication with natives, listening to speeches, watch TV news, listen to radio news, shadow recording, shadow recording means you, you, when the, when the, when you, you listen to some recorded speech, and uh, you follow, you repeat the speech in the same way. This is like uh, when, a, when a scientist speak or when a politician speak, you also try to understand how they are speaking, how they are uh, formulating the ideas and how they are uh, conveying those things in what language they use and things like that. Uh, so all these things are very important to be in their role so that when we inter interpret, we understand them better. So there's, there are a lot of learning and training uh, resources available 
for example, for speech repository resource of European Commission, you have the website. Another speech bank you have, and for uh, self-learning training you have another one. For so you get uh, uh, recorded speeches for uh, to train uh, to to uh, to for your training. So if I talk about when did I start my interpretation job, it was very surprisingly. It was a uh, when I uh, I learned J in JNU two years. I went to uh, PFU. The first assignment uh, in the meeting, I have been asked to interpret for the fresh students. So relatively, uh, I knew a little bit of Russian, but I am not an interpreter. Luckily, the language was from Russian to English. Uh, the uh, interpretation. And uh, secondly, the um, uh, the senior teacher was speaking very so slowly. Uh, so I could guess from the context what was going on and the, the most important thing is that none of that uh, audience uh, knew Russian. So that was an advantage which gave me a lot of uh, you know strength to uh, conduct that program. But afterwards I learned, yes, I have to prepare. This is an area where you can do something. So I started looking for more uh, uh, activities and uh, found works in exhibitions, Indian festival in Moscow and in poor business uh, sectors and things like that, you know. So I, the, at that time, it was not money. What was what I was uh, looking for? I wanted some practice. I wanted to do that. Of course, we were uh, living in the language uh, surroundings, so we uh, we had a lot of opportunities in uh, for uh, to interpret interpret for our friends and things like that. So these all gave me an idea. Okay, I should do this also. I should combine this also. And the Indian situation and the situation, job situation, you may work as a teacher or you may work as an interpreter I, uh, or, uh, some, some, uh, or in some business sectors uh, which is dealing with uh, uh, Russia and things like that. So I decided to combine uh, so that uh, my uh, academic activities and my career activities so that uh, we, we have uh, some jobs as well and a lot of exposure we get out of this. So, my first uh, simultaneous interpretation job was a very good experience. Luckily, we had a, I had a very good partner who has asked me how uh, you want to do it, whether you want to do from English to Russian or Russian to English. So definitely I prefer Russian to English because at least I can do something. So the person has given me less work, but then it, it struck me, yes, this is how a senior person encourages a junior person in order to come up, without which we will not be able to come up in this area because without practice, without doing it, we cannot learn. Everything is doing it, practice it and then only we can learn. So a lot of themes uh, covered and my path was more into translation, then consecutive interpretation, then simultaneous interpretation. So this, uh, this was a path which uh, naturally I had. So uh, one has complemented with the other one with all the specificities of each uh, type of interpretation or translation. So in conclusion, I just want to say that now uh, uh, we are, uh, we, we are the, India is a multi-lingual uh, uh, country and uh, we have, uh, uh, and, uh, and also we have a lot of, uh, we, uh, the, the understanding uh, should be forged between the people and also between, the, between India and other countries. India is also playing a crucial role in international organizations and also regional organizations. Therefore, interpretation is highly important, both for international and international activities. So in order to shape the future of national and international communication, multilingual India should start a specialized course in interpretation. And I urge uh, 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 universities like JNU and uh, centers like uh, uh, Center of Russian uh, Studies to start a specific interpretation course uh, in Russian and so that our students also will have uh, the uh, opportunity, the second, the first option to join for specific uh, uh, inter interpretation courses and also uh, this will enable many of our students uh, to uh, serve the people of India by shaping the future of communication. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. James. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. C.V. James.
Uh, if uh, yes, your colleagues, okay. if you have any questions, you can raise your hand or you can just type in the chat box. Krishna, if you can just see if there are some questions on YouTube. I can't hear come, uh, right now properly. Just give me Krishna. one minute. Ah, now I can hear. Yeah. Krishna, if you just see, uh, there are some questions on YouTube. <clears throat> Krishna or Vikram? Actually, I'm, get, I'm facing a technical uh, issue here because of the internet. So that's why <laughs> just I need to. There are times there is no question I can see, but in YouTube I won't be able to say. Okay, okay. They have thanked few of the participants. Have thanked Dr. James. Thank Dr. you. Arangji. Yeah, there are a lot of comments uh, to James, sir. Talk. All right, all right. So uh, maybe uh, there are no questions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. James, for your this wonderful talk. I think like we, uh, from all the speakers today, we have learned a lot. And we have, of course, uh, students over here who must be motivated with your experiences, how you all started your career, your knowledge, your work, your interpretation. And I hope uh, this will help the students to make their own path. So I would request now to uh, Dr. Kiran Singh Varma to uh, place the vote of thanks. Kiran, ma'am, over to you. Uh, unmute your mic, Kiran. Now, am I audible? Yes. Okay, okay. On behalf of Center of Russian Studies, uh, I would like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to respected Professor Ramadhikari Kumar, respected Professor Charanjit Singh, dear Dr. C.V. James for sharing your valuable insights and uh, experience on translation and interpretation. Uh, we appreciate uh, you all, uh, respected uh, senior colleagues, our teachers, and uh, Dr. C.V. James um, for sparing your time and bringing your expertise and experiences and engaging all of us, the participants, in such fruitful and uh, open exchanges throughout the event. We are very grateful to all of you. Hearty thanks. Our special thanks go to our colleagues, colleagues from Center of Russian Studies, Dr. Richa Savant. I saw Dr. Richa Savant. Dr. Minu Bhatnagar is also there. Dr. Minu Bhatnagar, Dr. Manuradha Chaudhary, Dr. Radha Mohan Meena. Our thanks go to Devashmita. Mm, journalist in Moscow for actively participating in the workshop. Uh, our young colleague from Aligarh University, Dr. Abdul Rahman is there. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Tushan Seni, Mr. Kaushal Kishore from uh, Maharaja. Suhail Akhtar is also here from Aligarh. Who? Suhail. Huh? Suhail Akhtar. Suhail, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, Suhail is also there. Uh, yeah, now I can see him. Yeah, yeah, he's there. And I can see Ravinder Singh also from, yeah. Ravinder is also from there, from Aligarh University. Yeah, Ravinder, Sohil, thank you so much for coming and, and attending actively. Uh, Sushan Saini, Mr. Kaushal Kishore from Maharaja Sayaji Rao University. Uh, I've enlisted them, actually, I have the list. Our young colleague from IFLU, English and Foreign Language University, young colleagues, two of them are there. Uh, from IPLU, English and Foreign Language University, Hyderabad, Dr. Kuvar Kant and Miss Monica Pandey. 
thank you very much i must express our deep sense of appreciation and big thanks to mr bhargav mitra joint secretary mr anjani kumar das uh, from moscow uh, miss nilima singh uh, then our students uh, uh, amit kumar and other students all the students thank you very much for pa actively participating in the workshop uh, and i uh, i owe a huge uh, debt of gratitude to the members of the organizing committee our chairperson professor ranjana banerji who is the chief coordinator of all the events uh, including this event and a big thanks to dr sonu saini for handling all all the uh, i'll say technical uh, issues and everything related to this event thank you so much thank you so much and yeah, one more thanks to all the volunteer students uh, dr sonu saini can you please name the volunteers who are so actively helping us can you yeah, please we, name uh, them uh, yeah we want to thank them. was helping us vikram chaudhary and uh, krishna kumar they thank were the you. brilliant uh, scholars uh, one of the uh, like two of the brilliant scholars of our center yeah uh, who were helping yeah, us thank you so much this event. thank yeah. you Thank you so much, Krishna, Krishna Kumar, and Vikram Chaudhary. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, my special thanks uh, to the uh, participants from Russia. There are few participants. I can see them. They are there. Yeah, they are still there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Rameshwar okay. Singh was there from. Uh, okay. The uh, Thank from you so much. He's Moscow. there now. I can see him, Dr. Rash Rameshwar yeah. Singh. A big thanks to you. Thank you. for participating Anjini attending Ji, this workshop yeah there. i have already i have already named okay. yeah, yeah yeah i have already named yeah and we should thank yeah. dr kiran singh barma for yes, yes support you know for organizing all these programs along with sonu saini dr sonu saini <laughs> thank you all participants and thank you but we are really grateful to all the speakers and all our senior teachers for coming and giving lectures during our webinars sharing the experiences sharing uh, you know about different subjects and uh, you know uh, giving the opportunity to all our students to uh, listen to them to uh, you know uh, they always heard about them but they could not attend their classes now they are ha having this opportunity through webinar online webinar so big thanks to all the teachers and speakers i can see professor harish kumar vijra is also there thank you very much sir for coming and attending the workshop thank you so much thank you pamina naz is also there yeah and all the students thank you so much thank you kiran ma'am for handling all the sessions and uh, Uh, wonderfully uh, participating actively participating in organizing all the events now if with your permission if you can have a group photograph yeah that that is a tradition of can, course we should have uh, yeah can we all request uh, request to all can we all switch on the webcam so that we can have a group photograph Yes, please turn on your videos if you can, so that we can take pictures. I would request Vikram uh, because I am facing a technical issue, so I'll request you, Vikram, to take the clicks, so I can see if people are turning their cameras. Because logo, please turn on your mic because you are getting. Uh, background good sounds that we can expect of course during this time yes you can see uh, many of us have uh, turned on the camera i cannot turn on because otherwise my voice will not come over here there is some low bandwidth issue okay. so maybe uh, i just call 1 2 3 and Krish, uh, vikram and krishna please uh, take this screenshot or they take the pictures So I'll say, just say one, two, three. Yes, yes. Sorry. 
yeah now we'll go to the second screen on second screen we can see uh, anjani ji is here nitesha khore is here dimitri babkov is here Gaspasiba. from kazan gaspasiba uh. gaspajin dimitri babkov tatiana sazanenka gaspaja ya tolka što vas videla izvinite što ni pa blagadarila no blagadariu vas sekh asiba i can see uh Zarina ji Shreya and uh, Garki from Pushkin Institute yeah so take second click plus 2 3 and third one you can see yeah Raman ji is here Kanika ji is here on the screen so 1 2 3 yeah thank you very much so we have the photographs we'll share it with you all if there any any observation any comments of course we are getting uh, some comments like uh, uh, gautam kashyap who is in peters present petersburg university is saying that uh, such uh, program should be organized every week uh, thank you for the compliment uh, gautam actually uh, it takes a lot of efforts to uh, you know um, to organize such events and uh, uh, a lot of support from the side of speakers also because they also have to prepare they also have to get ready for such kind of uh, events so of course uh, not uh, every week but of course we can just try it uh, often so as like we were saying that you know you know that uh, we'll have another uh, session of the same topic so we'll let you know thank you very much for all the compliments thank you all thank you we we'll soon be meeting yes according nitish yeah i can see according nitish also yeah thank you yes yes, yes. so thank you very much seo kharushwa da swidaniya birigiche sibya da birigiche sibya pajalsta i svaik bliskih thank you all spasibo vsem Спасибо. Всего доброго.